Welcome to Season 2, Episode 7 of Tradition of Excellence with Rich Kelly. I don't know Sheriff Kelly well, but Sheriff and I were both multi-sport athletes here at Frankfurt. This interview is really intriguing and inspiring. He gave some true words of wisdom, and I hope you enjoy this episode as much as I did. Thank you for joining us for the Tradition of Excellence. I'm Jason Cheek here with the class of 89, graduate Sheriff Rich Kelly. Pleasure to be here with you today. So Sheriff, what all were you all involved in in high school? I was involved in football, wrestling, and track. Were you a state for any of those? I did. I, I was all state in football, I was all state in wrestling, uh, conference championships, and there, during the time I was in high school, we were sectional champs in wrestling every year. Uh, you know, from freshman to the time I graduated, you know, had a great experience with both football and wrestling and track, uh, and had a great time. Nice. Did you do any other activities while you were in high school? No, just trying to keep up with three sports. Yeah. What have you done since high school? I graduated in 1989. I know that dates me. Uh, after high school graduation, I went to the University of Indianapolis, where I played football and I wrestled there. Uh, played football all four years. I wrestled for two years uh, until I had a serious knee injury and uh, foregone the last two seasons of wrestling, but I did play football all four years there at the University of Indianapolis. Um, after the University of Indianapolis, I graduated with a Bachelor of Science in uh, 1993. In July of uh, 1993, I went to the Indiana State Police Academy and spent the next 25 years with the Indiana State Police. Uh, ten years of that, I was on the SWAT team um, from 2009 till my day of retirement. In 2018, I was a sergeant and, uh, at the Lafayette District as well as uh, changed to commercial motor vehicle. And I basically had the north half of the state of Indiana um, and supervised all the commercial motor vehicle troopers. Um, 2018, I uh, retired from the Indiana State Police. Um, I decided to run for election for the sheriff of Clinton County. And uh, so in 2018, I did win those elections, uh, the primary and as well as the November general election and became the sheriff of Clinton County in 2019, in January. So since January of 2019, I've been the sheriff here in Clinton County. And uh, it's been a tremendous uh, education process. Yeah. Because it is a totally different job than what it was when I was an Indiana State Trooper. And uh, basically, you know, the sheriff's office is uh, the arm of the courts, uh, and we have the care of the inmates. So that pretty much takes up all of my time since 2019. Um, we have, we can house up to 220 plus inmates, and on average, we're between 170 and 200 at any given time. We have approximately 80 employees there at the sheriff's office, including our merit deputies on the road, as well as the, the court staff and then our jail staff. So the corrections officers probably have the, the most difficult job in dealing with our inmates and dealing with the courts and, and uh, basically providing uh, you know, the service to the courts um, and our facility inmates. Yeah. How long did you want to go for this pathway? I was probably 12, 13 years old when I made a decision. I really wanted to be a police officer. And uh, when you know I entered into college, it was definitely going to be a law enforcement uh, you know background and degree. Um, while I was at the University of Indianapolis, um, it, it was a fantastic school, and I'd highly recommend it to anybody. Athletics-wise, absolutely, and education-wise, 100%. And uh, you quickly learn that uh, when you go from high school to college, um, the grades are on you. Yeah. You have your classes. You have your itineraries. You have your, your agenda for the entire year and, and it becomes your responsibility. So it's a growing time uh, when you're there in college because the mom and dad aren't waking you up every day for the most part to get you to class, things like that, and it becomes your responsibility. And as an athlete in the NCAA, uh, it is a definite requirement that you have good grades or you will never see the field. Yeah. If you could go back and tell your uh, high school self one thing, what would it be? Well, there's something pretty important I think that uh, I look back on quite a bit and uh, I, I know all of us have been told listen listen we all listen 
but do we actually hear what's being said? Yeah. And the messages that, uh, you know, are given to us. And that's probably where I would want to be better, is that I would actually hear what I was listening to. Um, and obviously athletics has been a, a driving force in my career. I'm very competitive. I do not like to lose. I never have. And, uh, and I'm sure some of my old coaches will tell you, I didn't like to lose. And so I would have listened, but I would have heard what the message was that they were trying to give me as my, you know, the teachers, the educators, and, and also, you know, your athletic coaches, your athletic people um, that were trying to teach you and mold you and mentor you. And, you know, and that's not just with athletics, it's with different classes that you're in. Um, I think there's messages that all of our educators try and convey to our students, but sometimes they just don't hear it. They do listen, but they don't hear it. So my suggestion and what I would do when I was 16, 17 years old, I definitely, what I listened to, I wish I would have heard. And uh, when you're 30, 35 years old, you'll figure that out. It will hit you. You will understand what your mentors were trying to teach you back when you were in high school. Yeah, that's a great mindset to have. So if... Like, so let's say I want to go towards that, like uh, law enforcement and stuff. If anybody else would want to, what's like a good word that you'd give to them? Drive. 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 Keep on driving. And, uh, you know, and I'll use a, an example uh, in law enforcement, an example in just general life. Um, you need to keep a drive. You need to keep, stay driven. Yeah. Keep on pushing for what you want. Regardless of what anybody ever tells you, you keep driving to what you want. And, and I think that, you know, it's, it might be easier for me for, you know, athletics and things like that, and you're, you're competitive, um, but every job is a competitive job. And the, the job field out there is competitive, um, but I think as uh, somebody now that I choose who I hire, things like that, I look for that inside energy that a person has. Their dedication to what they want to do, what they want to accomplish is probably the most important thing. Um, and even in non-law enforcement world, you know, I, I have a couple daughters that are in Los Angeles, and I'm extremely proud of them. And as a dad, I watched them go through college at IU and IUPUI and graduate, and they were going to move to California. That's where they were going to go to work. No job in hand, anything like that. They just had their, their drive and their dream of taking editing videos, creating content, pictures, uh, those things like that. And now they're both working in that field um, with some, you know, renowned Hollywood and you know, movie stars, uh, hip hop, uh, everything, all of the above, um, they've been involved in for the last two years and they're making a living at it. So, you know, it's all about the drive and what you want to get done. And, you know, so that's my, probably my suggestion in, in law enforcement. Um, it's a, it's a wonderful field to be in. You see a lot of terrible things, but honestly, after over 30 years in law enforcement, I have seen better, I don't know how to word this in a proper English, but I've seen more good things than I have bad. Yeah. So if you weren't part of like the law enforcement, what else would you be? <clears throat> that's, a, that's a good question. Uh, I'm close to retirement and calling it quits, <laughs> but uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things where I like to, I like to commit service to our community, um, regardless of what it is. Um, I run our youth football program, things like that. Um, I was involved in, in Boy Scouts and Cub Scouts. And uh, that's probably what I'd probably drive to is providing, you know, a community of service. And that's, that's kind of what I want to do when I retire from being a police officer. Yeah. So would you like to be like a probation officer or? Well, all of it's a, a, a fantastic part of law enforcement. And we think of law enforcement, we don't include our probation officers. We don't include our community corrections people, our corrections officers that work inside jail facilities. And it's something that it's all a part of it. And without one of them, the others probably would fail. So there, those other portions of law enforcement are just as important from our judges, uh, community corrections, our probation people, um, all important. And it's all an important part of it. Would I have done it? Probably, more than likely, I would have been involved in something like that uh, involving law enforcement. Um, while I was in college, you know, I even had the, uh, the few classes that really interested me was the science part of law enforcement, and it's crime scene things. And, you know, and if you're involved in any of the classes with Mr. Allball, you kind of get a C part of that of crime scene technician yeah. work. And we've all seen it on TV, um, but that's something that, you know, it did catch my eye and I thought about it. But uh, there was nothing better than driving that state police car for 25 yeah. years. Yeah. 
So if uh, someone wants to go to that route, what's a good way to build their resume? Well, to build a resume, you know, I want to say that it's just work ethic and, and having a job, showing that you're accountable, showing that you show up at work on time. Um, I always, I always encourage people. You know, it's sometimes it's college is not the route for everyone, but corrections officers uh, and some people call them jail officers, turnkeys, whatever the case is. But to get involved in corrections, you only have to be 18 years old. And uh, I've hired a few Frankfurt High School graduates um, right after graduation, and some of them are still there working. Some aren't, uh, but they've all moved on to to the to the next level of what their life brought them. So you know, when you're 18 years old, it's a hard decision: do I go to college or do I go to the military? Do I go to IUPUI, a technical school, uh, get hours in? Um, all of that can help you with law enforcement, but basically, it boils down to what drive you have. Thanks for joining us today, and uh, thank you guys for watching, and see you later. Thank you for having me.